This video is going to show you some different strategies that you can use to solve multiplication problems. The first one we're going to talk about is probably my favorite, and that is the area model. Let's take, for example, the problem 14 times 23. When we're doing the area model, we're literally going to start by drawing, you can think of it as a big room or a big rectangle. And we're literally going to be splitting this area up based on place value usually. You don't have to do it that way, but most people choose to do it that way. So on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and write 14, but I wanna break 14 down. I don't know my 14 um, facts, so I'm gonna break this down into 10 and four. So I'm gonna go ahead and split my room up and say that this is 10 and this is four, if I wanna think about it that way. Again, I know that 10 plus four still equals um, my 14 up here. Next, I'm going to use the other um, length of my room to make 23. Now again, I could break that up into anything I want as long as it equals 23. I'm gonna break it up by place value. So I'm going to do 20 and three. Now I will note that sometimes 20 is a little bit scary for some students, so they might wanna do 10, 10 and three. That would also be okay. Here's the beauty of this. Now I'm just looking at this little tiny rectangle right here, and I'm saying, okay, what is the area of it? Four times 20, or four groups of 20. I know that that's 80, and I'm gonna write that inside. Then I'm gonna look at this little square right here, a little rectangle, and do four times three to find the area of 12. Next, I'm gonna do 10, and I know that this side is 20, because so is this length right there. So 10 times 20, which would be 200. And then I have 10 times three, which gives me 30. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add these all up together. Now, again, I know that I can kind of do some combinations here, let's see. I've got um, 80 and 30, if I go ahead and start there first. So I know that I could make a 10 or make a 100 in this case, right? And take 20 from this 30 to the 80. So 80 plus 20 is 100 plus that extra 10. So I have 110 plus 12 would be 122 plus 200 would be 322. That's one strategy for multiplication. The next strategy for solving multiplication problems might be to draw your base 10 blocks. So this would be a base 10 representation. How I can do this is by drawing um, my elbow here. And again, I'm gonna break my 14 times 23 apart by place value and do this using my drawings. So on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and do 14. So I know, let me change colors here. So I know that I'm going to have one rod and four ones. And on this, I'm going to have two rods for 20. So one, two, and three ones. Now, if we had base 10 blocks, um, we would be filling these in, right? So you can see that a, the rod be a flat, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that. Here's a rod times another rod, that would be another flat. Then I see I have um, four groups of rods, so I know that I would have one, two, three, four there, or four rods. Then I've got three rods up here, one, two, three, again, I get that because I have three ones and I know that the length of this is a rod. So now I need to fill in this area right here. So I know that I have a rod and four additional rods down here because basically I'm doing the same thing for this rod as I'm doing for this rod. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so lastly, I can see I have three ones and four ones, so I, need to, I know I need to have one row of four, one row of four, and one row of four, or 12, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I'm going to have to do some grouping, right? So I know I have 100, I have another 100. I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and group all of these into another 100, so now I have 300. Then I can see I have this extra 10 left over, and 12, so 10 plus 12 would be 322.
This is much easier to do when you actually put the base 10 blocks in there because you can see exactly how they measure, but this would at least give students an opportunity to use manipulatives and then use their drawings. The next strategy I'm going to show you is partial products. Partial products is really good when you have um, a multi-digit number times a single number, although you can use it for anything. You'll notice that it's similar to the area model, except for the area model, we're really drawing our rectangles. and the partial products, we're assuming you can kind of see those rectangles in your head. So let me give you an example. Let's say that we have 17 times 4. The partial products method says that we know that we can do this 4 times the 7, but also 4 times the 10. You can also think of this like the distributive property. So we're really breaking up that 17 into um, decomposing it into two other add-ins. So I know that I would have 4 times 7, which is 28, and 4 times 10, which is 40, to get the number 68. Again, partial products very similar to the area model. Let me show you one more. Again, let's go back to our 14 times 23. This is assuming that I really understand the multiplication algorithm, which really is using partial products, but it's almost a shortcut to it. So I know that I'm going to have 3 times 4, again, 1 times 1, which equals 12. I'm going to have 3 times not 1, but 10, which equals 30. I'm going to have 20 times 4, so 20 times 4, which equals 80. And then I'm going to have 20 times 10. Now, again, notice that I'm not saying 2 times 1 because it's not 2. Then I'm going to add all these up. Again, I get 110, 122, plus 200 is... 322. That is the partial products method of multiplication. Just so you know, the partial products method of multiplication is also sometimes called the extended algorithm. Again, that's because it's basically an extended version of the original algorithm. So it's really showing you those steps that you do. I hope you found this video helpful and you've now got some strategies and how you can multiply whole numbers.